Hello and welcome back to Ag Advancements, the Minecraft series in which we explore the different eras of agriculture and hopefully learn a thing or two along the way. My name is Brendan Black and I am your host for this series and today we are going to be focusing on developing our first civilization and hopefully we're able to domesticate some crops and animals along the way but we'll see how far we get today. Uh, but first of all, I think we need to... Hello dog. Uh, we still haven't gotten a name for the dog yet. We will hopefully have that soon. Oh, uh, hello sir. How can I help you? Mm, don't really have anything of value right now. The bridles are kind of interesting, but yeah. Moms are kind of weird. Um, so I did see in the comment. Oh, let me put my shirt back on. I did see in the comments uh, somebody suggested that if you shift and right click on the animals, you can see uh, their gender, their age. You can see all the information about them. Uh, so that was a really nice tip. Thank you for that. Uh, that's gonna make this a lot easier when it comes to breeding our animals. So actually, we have a male and a female right here. So if we wanted to breed these llamas, we could definitely could do that. Uh, so yeah, so the genetic animals mod allows for that. So we're gonna be using that whenever we get our own animals going. But today's goal is to uh, turn this area into, speaking of livestock, uh, to turn this area into more of a livable space for our first civilization. So the goal today is to get all of these resources that we gathered in the 2.5 episode. There we go. And to start building some houses, some huts. Uh, I was going to go the whole like tent and, you know, like hunter gatherer civilization at first, but I think it'd be better to skip ahead a little bit and start building somewhat of more of like a village of sorts. Not exactly a village because I don't want to go to Second Revolution, but a more uh, technologically advanced society than you know, your tr traditional hunter gatherer or starting to evolve through the different stages of agriculture a bit more quickly. Um, as usual, we're going to try to hit three advancement uh, advancements today. We're going to see which ones we're able to uh, hit. Maybe we can do the breed two animals together today. We'll kind of see how how that goes. But uh, I do want to plant some crops today, so we'll focus on that as well. But I think the first thing we need to do is just start kind of mapping out this area, figure out where we want to place everything, and start building. So I'm thinking this tree looks like a nice border. Got to watch out for that bear. Uh, let's knock down a lot of this grass so that way we have more space to build and try not to hit the bear because I don't want to have to deal with the bear. Uh, we gotta watch out for these mines, although that'll make for some nice, uh, resource gathering later on. So we'll focus on that whenever we get there. Um, yeah, so the goal today is to build at least one of the houses of the new settlement, uh, and to hopefully domesticate some crops. That's kind of my main goal. I want to start, start a small farm. Hello, Mr. Bear. I want to start a small farm and I want to start getting uh, our first civilization founded. That way we can get through all of the requirements that we need to to finish the first revolution of agriculture and start moving into the industrial age of agriculture. Uh, I think that'll be a lot of fun and we can start using a lot more of our materials and resources. We can finally start using our furnace again uh, and all those different things once we have uh, reached the second revolution of agriculture. So yeah, let's, I think we've got a good amount of this cleared away so far. Um, and I would have just used water to clear it, but I kind of want all this straw. It might come in handy later. Uh, last episode, we did build this stove, and we also have the cutting board. So if you have not had a chance to go watch the last episode, make sure you go do that. Uh, we got a good amount of work done around the uh, base. As you can see, we were able to clear away some land to be able to work on stuff. So yeah, let's start getting some oak logs established and we can start building our first little settlement here. I think our, I think the first house we need to build will be our house. That'll be the house that we actually uh, live in for the, for the long term of this series. And we'll continually upgrade the house and we actually might even move away from this area and develop a larger society later. But for right now, let's clear away the space here. I want to have my house at the top of the hill because obviously, you know, the, the uh, house at the top of the hill is typically the person who's in charge of the society. And seeing as how nobody else is putting in any work, that wandering villager or wandering trader certainly is not working to build anything because he's a nomad, a, uh, a vagabond. Uh, I'm going to make myself the person in charge of this society. So let me make a couple shovels. Um, yeah, I got some iron to spare. Might as well. Why have I not made iron tools yet? That should be a priority. Oh, well, we'll get to that in a second. Iron tools. Uh, I guess technically iron is more... Oh, no, because iron was... The Iron Age was not uh, industrial. Like, we had we had iron tools, like, long before we got to the Industrial Revolution. So, that, yeah, that shouldn't be an issue. 
As far as our lesson for today's episode, I do not have that planned out yet, but I think whenever we get there, we will uh, cover that. So for right now, let's just enjoy the process of getting everything built. And uh, I think I'm gonna just go ahead and speed up this process as I get the foundation laid down and we'll snap back whenever I have uh, finished putting everything together. Sound good? All right, I'll see you guys in just a minute. Okay, so it's kind of a mess right now. Uh, as you might have seen during the montage, I went through like three different floor plans. I was originally gonna have this whole thing where I had like an L shape coming out over here. I really liked that idea. And then I decided, you know what? We're still in the first revolution. I don't wanna make a house that's too big or too like overpowering for the revolution we're supposed to be in. So I don't wanna make like a, you know, this this really big, nice house if we're still trying to get all of our, you know, farming stuff together, all of our tools together and everything and building the rest of the society. So I'm building it big enough that I have room to work and I have room for storage, but I'm trying to go for a more basic kind of like log cabin-esque look to it. Very basic Minecraft house. Um, not crazy about the design, but we're going to upgrade it later. I eventually do want to kick out this wall and expand this and create more of like this side room and almost like a workshop or a garage or something along those lines. But when we get to the industrial age, we will work on uh, that part of it. For right now, I want to keep it somewhat simple. Again, just keep it more accurate. And like I said, I'm not going for historical accuracy with any of this um, because it's just, you know, I, I don't know architecture as well as I know agriculture. So we're going to just make our best guess as to what a house during the first revolution of agriculture would have looked like because it's like a 13,000 year span or something along those lines. So it's not like a, it's not exactly easy to try to determine a good house model to base that off of. So I'm just going off of what looks best to me and then we will adjust as we see fit. So yeah, I'm gonna keep working on this. I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, so we have the floor established. I kind of like the look of the cobblestone floor. It's very villagey, kind of gives like a more of like a, like a, I don't know, old fashioned kind of more simplified house. Um, I don't know, kind of playing with some new ideas. We'll see what comes out of it. Once again, I am doing this for the purposes of trying to maintain some simplicity since we are in the uh, first revolution of agriculture, so do not judge me for my use of strictly oak wood. I do want to upgrade it and add some different types of wood, some different elements of different colors and blocks and that sort of thing, but for right now, I'm going to stick to the uh, basic oak wood just because I think that it'll look the most... Realistic isn't the right word. The most um, technologically consistent, I guess? I don't know what I'm trying to say. Don't judge me.
Call it basic if you will. I like it. I think it'll work. Um, I'll add probably more logs as the roof because again, we're going from more of like a log cabin look. Building, I love building, but building is not always my strong suit. Aesthetics are kind of not my, 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 my superpower. So don't judge me too much and I will fix it off camera if I need to. Because we have a lot of work to get to. Oh, that's going to drive me crazy. I can't believe that I just misplaced a freaking glass pane. Uh, also, real quick, let me just... Can I just... Oh, wait, is, is it four? Has it always been four? Do you only get three out of it? Is that what it is? You only get three out of it. Okay. Lame, but okay. All right, I just have to add a roof and some stairs and it's done. Honestly, it did not take me as long as I thought it would. I usually take a lot longer on my builds. Again, this is not my highest quality build. This is not my proudest build by any means, but it's the build that's going to work for what I'm trying to do at the moment. So yeah. I feel like that's way too much log. Ow. Uh, I don't know, man. What if I do the oak logs, but oh, no. Okay, un momento. Okay, I'm back. I looked at some pictures of Minecraft log cabins and made myself feel bad. So I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing and call it good. Um, I did not get nearly enough wood to build the rest of the civilization because I did not realize how many of these logs I'm going to waste on my own house. So I think what I need to do instead is either pick a different roof for my house so I can still have logs left over for the rest of the settlements, or I'm going to have to have another 0.5 episode to get more wood, which I like, dude, I like destroyed the, the, the forest to get all this wood. So I don't really want to have to do, have to do that again, but I kind of need a house. So let's see, I've got 25 here and I have like another two stacks. I mean, the rest of the houses aren't gonna be this big. Like this is gonna be like the biggest house by far. The rest of the houses are gonna be really small little huts. So I, I won't need very much wood for them, but also I'd like to have some logs left over. So I don't know, let's just, I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. It might look like trash, it might, it might look great. We'll figure that out when we get there. need to get this cabin done. Maybe I won't build the entire civilization today. That's probably a little lofty for me to create an entire civilization. As they say, Rome was not built in a day. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is for today, I'm going to finish my house, move all my stuff into here, and then we're going to make our first farm. And I can go do the lesson and we can work on all that kind of stuff and we can ignore how bad my house is. And then I'll start working on the rest of the village another time. We're just going to connect these guys in the middle. I don't feel like continually climbing. It's kind of getting annoying. Okay. Boom. Uh, let's see. Man, my... Oh, I still have another stack. Okay. I was going to say, am I almost out of wood? 
So if I'm out of wood, then I am not sure what I'm gonna do because I do not want to go through and chop down another entire forest. Oh wait, that's not what I was doing. Boom. Okay. While I'm working on this, I suppose I could give you some fun facts. I wish I had some interesting information about trees or about wood or anything like that, but honestly, uh, I don't know trees as well as I know like other plants and other types of crops and stuff. Um, what I can tell you is, ah, that looks kind of awkward. Honestly, I kind of feel like I should just combine them to the point. Yeah. I hate to redo it, but yeah, let's let's combine them to the point. I'm gonna need I'm gonna need a couple more axes. Okay, well, I am getting all of my materials together. I guess I could give you some fun facts about agriculture uh, just to pass the time a little bit. So um, the first crop that we're gonna try to grow here is probably gonna be wheat. And uh, wheat is actually one of the staple crops in the Midwest of Cal or California, of the United States. So if you uh, grew up or are currently living in the, in the Midwestern United States, uh, you probably have seen wheat. Uh, it's a pretty prominent crop. Uh, we have some here in California as well. It's just not quite as popular here as it is in other states. But fun fact about California is that while some states like Kansas, for example, only grow five total crops or five total types of crops. Not to say they only have like five corn stalks and like that's their entire crop production. No, no, no. They only grow like corn, soybeans, wheat, and cotton and a couple other things, I think. But um, yeah, they have a very, very limited agricultural economy in terms of what they can produce. California, where I'm from, produces over 400 types of crops. So we have everything you could imagine. I mean, we've got wheat, we've got corn, we've got barley, we've got oats, we've got alfalfa, and then we have things like strawberries, lettuce, you know, cucumbers, uh, watermelon, you know, uh, pretty much any type of crop you could think of, California grows it. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, citrus, obviously we have dairy, beef, uh, chicken, we have pork, but not quite as much pork as some other places. Uh, we really don't specialize so much in pork as we do in dairy and other uh Beef as well, to a degree. Beef is not like our, our biggest thing compared to like Texas, but we do have a decent amount here. Uh, but we are the most diversified in our agriculture. So we grow, excuse me, we grow a little bit of everything and we grow a lot of a few things. So like, for example, uh, pistachios, almonds, tree nuts, citrus, you know, those kinds of stuff. We are the top producing state for those commodities. Uh, whereas, you know, we have like... Um, mine just blinked you know uh like georgia for example is known as the peach state well peaches are actually more commonly grown in california than they are in georgia we actually are one of the leading peach producing states in the country and not that georgia is not a peach producing state they most definitely are it's actually their top commodity but we just happen to produce more than them same with oranges in, in florida we actually produce more table oranges than florida does but florida produces more orange juice and they uh, kind of corner the market on oranges first and so that's kind of why they are the more uh, heavily associated with oranges whereas we're more uh, heavily associated with like dairy and that sort of stuff which we are one of the top dairy producing states as well we're not always the top it kind of fluctuates so like some years you know like um uh, Wisconsin is one of our bigger competitors. The top five dairy states kind of fluctuate all the time between like Wisconsin, um, Texas, New York, California, and the fifth one kind of depends. Sometimes it's like Oklahoma. Sometimes it's you know just it, it just it's random. Um, that looks a little bit better. I just need to add something up there to kind of block it off, like maybe like another wood type. And then it, it honestly, it, it's not a bad little house. Like it, it could be a lot worse. I have made worse houses in my life. And like I said, it's a starter house and it's supposed to just be, I swear I heard a creeper. Uh, it's supposed to just be something that is supposed to be like a small farmhouse to get us by until we can start producing our larger uh, agricultural operation here. 
with, you know, multiple other houses and that sort of thing. But that'll work for right now. But anyways, as I was saying, um, yeah, we produce a lot of different types of crops. Um, we're the top dairy state, we're the top citrus state, we're the top pistachio, almond, all those different types of crops. Fun fact about pistachios, since we're on this tangent, um, we didn't used to be the top pistachio, the top pistachio producer. The top pistachio producer actually used to be uh, Japan. Japan was huge in pistachio production, and then we came in and said, you know, I think we could do that better than you, and we did. We we literally came in and we found a better way to produce pistachios more effectively, more efficiently, and uh, for cheaper, and they're higher quality. And so we produce pistachios in a way that they hadn't done before. Nice. Isn't it iron pick? Iron pick? Yes. Um, okay, we need to hunt for different types of wood. I'm kind of leaning towards like spruce, if we can go get some spruce trees, which I think should be up here. Uh, but yeah, so we started producing pistachios uh, because Japan was charging so much for their pistachios, so we were we were like, well, we'll just we'll just grow our own, and so we did, and it turned out really really well. Uh, so much so that uh, Japan actually used to paint their pistachios pink. Oh. Okay, um, I'm not going to deal with you guys right now. If you come near my village, I may have to deal with you. But luckily, there's no villagers there, so it won't like trigger a raid or anything. And I haven't found a regular village yet, so I'm not too worried about that. But that's good to know for future notice. Anyways, um, yeah, pistachios don't really need to be... What was I saying? Japan. Japan used to uh, paint their pistachios, or more so like kind of like dye them, uh, pinkish color. And so if they were pink, you knew they were from Japan. That was like their staple, like their, like their trademark. Uh, when we started producing our pistachios, we left them green and and kind of you know corner the market on that side of things, so we were able to say like, hey, we're producing real pistachios because ours are actually the right color, and it, it created this whole feud. And now we like way outrank uh, Japan in terms of pistachio production. It's actually kind of cool. Uh, did I get a sapling from this guy? I kind of need. Oh yes, multiple saplings. Beautiful. We're gonna take those back and grow those over where we're at. That way we can get some more spruce wood. I think spruce wood will be what I need to fill in that top part there. Give it a little bit of darkness. I like it. You know, it's kind of it's kind of coming together. I kind of like it. It's not great. It's not horrible. But you know, I think it'll I think it'll be good. I think that it's going to work. Um, Oh, never mind. Birch? Can we use birch? Because that is way too similar to the color of the oak log. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I like that very much. Shoot. That's okay. Um, yeah, let's let's try out let's try out birch wood and see if we can try uh, do that. Um, I'm not gonna make you go through the whole process because we're. We're already kind of wasting a lot of time here, so I'm just gonna zap back to when I have the birch wood. So see you guys in a minute. And we're back. We have our birch now. Uh, I know we said we're gonna go for a darker tone, but you know, darkness is overrated. We're gonna we're gonna try for the lighter tone and make it a little bit more friendly and and approachable. And uh, yeah, it's definitely not don't the, for any other reason. It's just it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Let's just do this right quick. And I... There we go. Okay, let's put this all together. How does that look? Yeah, that's kind of ugly, honestly. Should I do glass? I don't know if I want to do glass. I feel like that's... I don't know. Maybe I'll leave it like that for right now. You guys can kind of let me know how it looks. I'm not, I'm really not a fan of this design. Um, like I said, it's 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 more utility than it is aesthetic right now. Like I'm kind of just trying to get through it just so we have a base. Ow, there we go. Let's let's see how we're looking. You know, it it could be worse. We'll we'll keep it for right now. It's a little bit ugly, but you know, it's it's fine. Okay, um, what am I looking for here? Um, I don't know what I was looking 
four. Uh, let's. Okay. So the first goal of the episode is done. Our house is built. It's ready to go. Um, so now let's move on to the next goal, which is to start our first farm. I think we're going to start just kind of like right here. It's like a little like side garden thing. Uh, that's probably honestly going to be our best bet. Um, I hate to do this, but honestly, I think this is going to be the best. Let's just make some fences. Uh, I gotta use the book for this one. I don't like making fences. Uh, f excuse me. Ooh, upgrades. Upgrades, people, upgrades. Why do I have the, there it is. Okay. No, hmm. Can I do oak fence? Come on, give me that. There it is. No. You know what? This is probably going to be a lot easier. Let's just do this. And then we'll do this. Boom, boom, boom. That was way too many fences. But you know what? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, the area where we were gonna have our little garage extension, that's gonna be our first farm here. So we're just gonna go ahead and connect that real quick. We're gonna disconnect all of this soil. Notice I didn't call it dirt because it has grass on it, so it is considered soil. Uh, dirt, fun fact, is dead soil. So if you call something dirt, you have to make sure that it's dead first because if it has any kind of weeds or plants growing in it, it is no longer considered, or it's not considered dirt, it is considered soil because soil is alive and it's well and it can, it can take care of things. Dirt is dead and it is not, uh, not very good. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna create a little path here. So we'll go like there we go. Yeah, we'll do that, and then we'll do um, to like there. Are you gonna reach? You should reach. You might not reach the corner, so that's the only thing I'm worried about. We'll try that for right now, and we'll see. Uh, let me grab a gate. If I can remember how to craft gates. I always forget how to craft gates. Uh, first of all, I need more sticks. That much I know. And then it's like this. Yeah, there we go. There we go, got a gate, okay. So now let's grab our seeds. Uh, we're just gonna plant these, oh, I need to get my stakes, do I have, st mm. oh wait, we're not, we're not doing that yet, we're not doing that yet, we're not there. I'm getting a little bit ahead of the game. We're gonna plant these seeds. Careful there. Uh, we're gonna plant those seeds there and I'm just going to plant a little bit of everything right now. Uh, I have these um, mutated seeds that I should probably be planting, so I'm going to do that. Technically, we're not in the green revolution yet. I, did I not have three seeds? Hold on. What? Does a seed take two? I, I'm so confused. Okay. I don't know. We're going to fill the rest of it with wheat. I don't understand why it's taking two. Yeah, these only take one, so I don't know what happened there. Oh, well, let's fill up this whole thing with wheat seeds. Uh, there it is, a seedy place. So we got one advancement for the day. So the idea behind this, first of all, is because I don't... I don't want to dig out more space right now, so I'm using this tiny space for everything. But second of all, uh, we're going to do polycropping. So, ooh, you're already growing really fast. Uh, we're going to do polycropping, so we're going to have a uh, an assortment of different crops in here that are all growing at the same time. And the idea is that they 
In real world agriculture, if you have multiple different types of crops in the same field, uh, the biodiversity that is offered by those different crops, so like tomatoes and wheat and carrots, for example, uh, those are all going to provide different nutrients to the soil, uh, and they're going to take different nutrients from the soil. So because of that, they can mutually benef be beneficial to each other and provide nutrients to other crops in the field in addition to themselves. This is why these crops are growing so fast right now, is because they are next to other crops that are uh, genetically different than them, providing biodiversity. We do have some weeds growing. I'm going to have to get on top of that real quick, but so far, I think this is going pretty well. Let's just kind of see how these guys do for a second. These weeds are growing fast, though. Okay, let's grab the rake. Let's go ahead and, and uh, get rid of these weeds real quick. That is going to be the one hassle about this is I'm going to have to constantly be weeding, but hey, that's agriculture. Or not the rake, the, the hoe, the wooden hoe. There we go. Um, any others there? I think most of these are growing pretty well on their own, but just kind of knocking these these weeds down. They're kind of hard to see when, when everything's like this. Like it's easier to see them when they're fully grown. But that should be good for right now. We'll keep keep an eye on everything. Uh, it might take me a minute to move everything over. So what I might do is just cut out and uh, move everything into the house. That way, whenever we snap back, it's already done. And we can start moving on to the next task of the episode. All right, so I will see you guys in just one minute. Okay, we're back. I have officially cleared out this uh, old shack of ours and moved it all over here. So we are now settled into our new little farmhouse. Uh, I did sort our inventory here, although I did just realize that I put them in the wrong order. Uh, this one was supposed to be on the bottom and this one's supposed to be on top, but you know what? It's fine. Uh, it'll work. Um, but yeah, so we are now officially moved into our new home. I think I'm going to tear down this little shack real quick just so we have the extra materials available if we need them. Uh, and then we can get started on our next task. So give me just a minute and I'll take care of that. All right, and the shack is tore down, so now we have uh, some more resources we can add to our disposal, it's just in case we need them for anything. But uh, yeah, I think we've made pretty good progress today. I'm not ready to end it just yet. I have a couple more things I wanna to try to knock out, uh, but I'm pretty satisfied with where we've gotten today. We have uh, officially started our first settlement and our first farm. Um, as we've discussed in previous episodes, the first farm is kind of what establishes the first settlement. So uh, I know we were already farmers before in our in our little cave, but now we are official farmers because we actually have a farmhouse and a farmstead to uh, take care of and work on. Where did my rake go? There's my rake. I got to take care of my weeds real quick. Uh, this is probably how I'm going to start every episode is just being here taking care of the weeds just because it's so such a pain, uh, at least until I start the third revolution where we can start genetically modifying things and breeding them to not have to deal with weeds. That'll be so nice. But until we get there, until we're able to use pesticides and fertilizers and all that, I am just going to be here uh, clicking away at these weeds. But um, I need to check to see how long we've been recording and then we can figure out how uh, how we're going to proceed from here. We've kind of already done the ag lesson for today. Uh, the ag lesson uh, kind of developed into that conversation about soil and biodiversity and the importance of it. I know we've already kind of talked about soil, but uh, I want to touch on it a bit deeper. And I think that this gave a good example as to why uh, soil biodiversity is so useful. And so this all ties back into regenerative methods of agriculture, uh, which are, in my opinion, really interesting to learn about. So that was kind of our lesson. We can talk about more stuff as, as it develops, but that's really the big thing that uh, I think was important to learn about today. Uh, and we talked about, you know, different uh, evolutions of agriculture uh, in society and how they have differentiated themselves and all those sorts of things. Uh, I can give you a fun fact. I don't know if I've said this on an episode yet or not, but pumpkins, uh, these guys are actually considered berries. So by the botanical definition of a berry, a berry has to have at least three layers of skin. Uh, they have to have an endocarp, a mesocarp, and a, um, I don't remember what the, uh, exocarp, I want to say, something like that. Um, 
epicarp, maybe? I don't remember. Anyways, uh, they have to have three layers of skin, and they have to have multiple seeds on the inside of the uh, fruit. And so veg- or vegetables, pumpkins, although they're considered vegetables from a botanical perspective, can be seen as fruit because they are what the plant produces, and they have seeds on the inside of them, which are uh, characteristics of a fruit because that's how plants reproduce. So pumpkins are not only fruit, but they are considered berries because of their botanical qualities. So there's a little fun fact for you. Uh, if you ever see pumpkins around Halloween, you can say you're going berry picking when you're going to the pumpkin patch. Uh, that's kind of a fun thing you can tell people. But yeah, there's another little fun fact. Uh, in terms of getting another ad advancement done today, we already did the seed one. Let's see if we can find any others to work on today. So we did a seed place. Um, oh, balanced diet going to be hard. We have to eat everything that is edible. Okay, make a text sign glow, use a map while writing a draft. Oh, I have to find a draft. Okay. Uh, catch an axolotl, team up with an axolotl in a fight. I don't know when we're going to see an axolotl. Feed a melon to a hippo. Ooh, that's cool. I didn't even know there were hippos in this mod pack. Move a bee nest with three bees inside using silk touch. These are all a little bit outside of our possibility at the moment. Uh, we could try to breed two animals together. Apply honeycomb to a copper block, breed all the animals. Okay. Uh, we can look into scr- uh, Farmer's Delight, see if there's anything we can do here. Place down some organic compost. It composts better with the sun, water, and mushrooms. How do you make organic compost again? Um, can I... J-E-I, are you here? Organic. Is there a recipe for you? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I still don't know how to get tree bark. Uh, How do you get? Oh, okay. So whenever you, okay, let's, let's do that one. Let's, let's get some tree bark. Let's make some organic compost and we'll throw that down for our uh, farm. I was originally planning on waiting to do that until the third revolution, but honestly, you know, there's no better time than the present. Let's, let's go knock that one out real quick. Whoa. Is that my dog? How'd you get all the way down here? Come on. Uh, I'm recording this after the uh, 2023 mob vote, so as I'm sure you guys already know, uh, soon enough we'll be able to get some armor for our dog to keep him safe, so that way, uh, as we're going to the dangerous caves like this one, uh, we don't have to worry about him getting too beat up or too hurt. I still, I hope that it's strong enough to keep him alive, because I still fear that dogs are not going to be super useful, but we're going to find out. Did it not... Excuse me? Do you have to use like a certain type of axe? Like how do you, uh, tree bark? It just says, yeah, stone axe is right there. It's like a random chance, like a, like a very small chance. Okay, so we don't have to use tree bark. We can also, we can actually make that right now. We just need more bone meal. Uh, let's, it's becoming night. Let's see if we can get some skeletons to spawn. We'll take out some skeletons, grab some bone meal, and then we'll be able to make some organic compost. Because honestly, uh, even though we're still in the first revolution, organic compost was still kind of a thing that was used back in the day. Uh, it just was called different things, and but the, the quality of it was still, uh, was still there. So I don't think that it is beyond our practice to be able to use organic compost before we get to the point where, uh, you know, inorganic compost was created. Okay, let's take our dog inside. Uh, the first pets were domesticated, man, I don't remember how long ago. I read a book about this recently. I don't remember what it said about the first domesticated pets. I need to reread it, apparently, because I am failing in my memory. But um, that could be kind of a fun fact for the day. Not so much. Well, it's kind of agricultural. Uh, what was I going to grab? Um, bones. I just slept. Why did I sleep? We were looking for skeletons. What am I doing? Uh, wait, whoa, whoa, where's our composter? We have a composter, right? Composter, okay. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna stick our, excuse me. We're gonna stick our composter in here with our stuff. We're gonna stick it right back here in this back corner. Um, okay, that's fine. Uh, and then we're going to actually, what we should do is stick it like right here. Yeah, that works. And then we're going to, as we're harvesting stuff, if we get anything we don't want, or if we have an excess of certain crops, then we can compost them. 
and that should be able to get us some bone meal that we can use to create some organic compost, which we can then use to get the advancement. So I think that'll be good. Let me start raking some of this. I have some flowers I could probably throw in there too. I need to throw my dog inside. He's getting annoying. Come on. <sighs> Boom. Okay, gotta weed my garden real quick. Da -da -da. Look at that, my weed's growing nice and healthy. I honestly had a lot more planned for today, but I am forgetting most of what I had planned for today. So I'd say let's try to get our, our two more advancements for the episode, uh, and then we'll go ahead and call it an episode at that point. So let's collect all of our crops real quick. I think that's everything that is ready to be collected at the moment. Uh, dog, come with me. I'm going to grab some flowers and try to make some compost out of them real quick. Uh, let's get... Let's use our allium. We have a lot of allium. Stay. We're just going to do this for a minute until we have some good bone meal to make our organic compost out of. So fun fact, there's a misconception in regards to uh, fertilizers and pesticides. People seem to think that organic agriculture does not use fertilizers or pesticides. Uh, in fact, it does. It just uses different types and in different amounts. So uh, if it's certified organic, it's not that they can't use any pesticides or any fertilizers. They can. They just have to use ones that are certified or guaranteed safe by uh, the USDA. So they're still able to use all the chemicals and everything that conventional farms use. They just have to use the right ones and they can't use them past a certain amount because once they use them past a certain amount, then they're no longer considered organic. So there's a fun little misconception uh, or a myth buster for you. Uh, we are allowed to use fertilizers on our little organic farm here. And the only reason that we're growing this organically is because in all reality, uh, back in the day, it was all organic. You know, there, there wasn't really a, a split until like the... 1960s uh, because organic agriculture basically just means you're not using conventional methods but the problem is conventional methods evolve all the time so organic agriculture changes its definition uh, pretty frequently so that's kind of a fun little you know fun little food for thought for you about how organic agriculture works so if you're one of those people who prefers to eat organic food you know more power to you just know that it's not uh, it's not completely void of all the chemicals and things you may be uh, fearful of. All right, here we go. Organic compost. So what we're gonna do now is it says what did it say uh, in the advancement? Place down some organic compost. It composts best better with sun, water, and mushrooms. Okay, uh, so we're trying to create. The compo I, I'm not quite sure how this works. This is sun, water, and mushrooms. I have mushrooms. Maybe let's put it down right here next to our fish. There we go. Advanced composting. Uh, sun, water, and mushrooms. Let me throw a mushroom on top of it and just stay there. Uh, Where did my mushroom go? Brown mushroom. There we go. Stick a mushroom on there. And we're going to let that guy uh, just kind of cook over the next, I don't know how long it takes, but over the next little while and see what happens to him. Let's see if we can get any more plant food. Organic combo soil decays into rich soil and upgrade for your farms. Cool. So we'll try that later. Um, hang some rope above tomato crops to make it grow taller. I have some rope, or I can make some rope real quick, rather. So let's do that. It was like that. Canvas which makes, how do you make rope? Oh, it's just, okay, I'm overcomplicating it. So we just need to hang this right above our tomatoes. How do I, 
How do I hang you though? Do I have to like actually hang you from something? Why does this keep going? Oh wait, it's because I'm stupid. There we go. Uh, give me you. For the time being, let's do. Let's collect everything. Can I do something like? No, it doesn't work that way. Okay. So what I need to do then is I need to remove you and remove you. And we're going to switch you spots. So we'll put you there. And we're going to put you there. And maybe that'll help with some biodiversity stuff. That could be kind of cool. Uh, so we're going to hang you right there. I think that's how it's supposed to work. I don't know. We're going to see. We're going to test it out. That's, that's kind of what the description said, but I don't know if, if you have to hang it like directly above it or if you have to hang it, like a few blocks above it, like however many blocks you want it to grow up to. I'm not entirely sure. It wasn't super clear. But we'll wait a second and see if that decides to grow on us. Uh, I'm going to go do my weeds one more time. This is going to become a very tedious task over time. But I think that we've pretty much accomplished some pretty good things throughout this episode. Uh, I'm going to finish up the episode as I'm as I'm doing my weeds here. But yeah, we learned some things about soil. We learned some things about organic agriculture, about uh, California's agricultural commodities, as well as uh, agricultural commodities throughout the rest of the states. Uh, if you enjoyed today's episode, I hope that you, uh, share it and like it and follow it and do all the things, subscribe, everything that is, uh, typically asked of people who watch YouTube videos. Uh, if you did not like it, please let me know what I could do better to improve, uh, in the series. And, uh, I'm always looking for new suggestions for things I could do, different projects I could work on. I know I don't get as much done in these episodes as I was like, as I, as I would like to. Let's try that. Maybe. We'll kind of see. Uh, I could try using some bone meal on you and seeing if that makes it work. That's actually a good idea. Let's try that. We have a, we have some leftover bone meal, so you might as well try it. Uh, we've got three. That should be enough. Yeah. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate you taking the time and bearing with me and all my craziness. Uh, I have no idea how long... Oh, all that does is give me more weeds. Arr. Wasted bone meal. Um, I guess let's just try that for right now and see. Uh, yeah, thank you all so much for bearing with me and all my craziness. I know I go in a million different directions every episode, so I appreciate you uh, bearing with me as I try to figure out what I'm working on. Um, I think that today's goal was well met in terms of our progress. We were able to get a, 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 a house established. Uh, that's the first step towards completing our goal of creating a civilization. We have our first domesticated crops that we're going to be breeding and trying to get into a more uh, controlled environment. And as we get to that point, we'll begin to start our transition into the second revolution of agriculture. So we're working on this advancement here. I don't quite know what I'm doing wrong. Hang some rope above a tomato crop to make it grow taller. Okay. Throw a rotten tomato one of those pesky raiders. Oh, if I had a rotten tomato, I could do that. That would be fun. Uh, skillet let you cook on the go. Put down a cooking pot. Okay. Discover and steal. Obtain a polluting machine. Okay, I already did that. Obtain a, obtain a leaf sword. Um, I could do this. Obtain a trash... Obtain a crusher for to recycle armors. Obtain a vacuum cleaner. Waste fights back. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're going to mess with the advancements later. Uh, if we don't get a third advancement today, then that is okay. Um, because I think that we've gone on long enough today. You guys have listened to my ranting for enough, so I'm going to start to wrap up the episode here. But thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, for bearing with me as I built my house and as I got all the crops established. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Uh, thank you to those of you who have been uh, big supporters of the of the uh, episodes of the, of the series. I've been really enjoying seeing all your comments as you guys have told me what to try next. Uh, specifically, the comment that told me I could right-click to see that it's female. That is fantastic. So that way, now I know uh, which animals I want to breed and how you know how to breed them and go about all that. Um, 
I know that there's more to do with like the colors and stuff. So for those of you who understand genetic animals, could you explain that one to me? I'm not quite sure how the colors or the, you know, any of this kind of stuff works. So just kind of let me know. But uh, we are going to start working towards getting some livestock. So I'll, I'll bring some of these cows down to our little base here and set up a little pen for them. Start our domestication of animals project. And uh, yeah, as we get to that point, we'll be getting closer and closer to transitioning into the second revolution of agriculture. So that being said, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I uh, hope to catch you all next month for the next episode. Uh, it's always a pleasure to teach you guys a thing or two about agriculture. I hope that you're enjoying this series as much as I am. I'm going to stop talking now because I've been talking for a while. And I think that our tomato is not going to grow. So we're not going to get the advancement today. But that's okay. Uh, we're going to go to bed. But I will see you guys in the next one. And don't forget, if you ate today... Oop, there it goes. Let's try that again. And don't forget, if you ate today... Thank a farmer.